Hello again, it's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to talk to you about file handles. And also you could think of this video as an introduction to reading and writing files. Now the first thing we want to talk about is what is a file? So a file is, you have a, probably have an intuitive sense of what a file is. It's basically a, a, a stream of, of bytes of data that's on your computer. And the file exists on the GNU Linux side of things. And we want to bring it into Python. It doesn't exist in Python until we read it in. And so that's, that's what we're going to try to do today. And so up until now, we've basically been typing in all of our DNA sequences directly into our Python scripts. And that's not really what you want to do in a normal situation. You want to be able to read in files and bring in data from, from your file system here into your script and then process the data and maybe write new output files to, uh, to the file system. And so I created a file just for an example, and it's just called file.txt. It's just a real simple example and so this file has four lines of text and the other thing is that each line is of different length so we want to be able to take in that take that into account and take in this information and to do this I'll just do a Python terminal example and the first thing I need to tell you is about the Python function open open is a way that we open files we want to create a file handle and so I'll call it file handle for illustration to illustrate the idea here and I'm going to put the file name in the open function file.txt and so the file handle is not the file itself it is a Python object that we can use to interact with that file and to open and read through the lines of that file and open takes in an optional second argument and so in this case I want to read the file so but read is the default option so in the case of reading a file this actually single quote R here is optional. I could leave that out if I wanted. I'll just leave it in here for now. So I hit enter and I've merely opened the file. I've merely established a, say, a communication channel between the Python script and the GNU Linux file system. And now I can loop through the contents of this file. But let's just say I wanted to do file handle dot read and this is not necessarily the best way to do this, but I think it illustrates some ideas. And so if I hit enter, what we see is this essentially created one giant string and stored the entire contents of that file, which you saw was four lines into one string. Now the problem with this is it's really hard to see what the file actually said because the lines kind of run together and it's got these, these weird backslash n uh, characters going on here. What those are is uh, how the computer knows to start a new line. This is what they call a new line character. And it is what happens when I hit enter or return on my keyboard. And that term return kind of goes back to typewriters, actually. It's, it stands for like carriage return, the way that, that that rolling thing would basically move back over and allow you to type type to a new line and, and your, your cursor goes back to the new line. So every time you hit enter, you see that cursor jump to a new line at the beginning of the new line. That's what's going on, and that's what that backslash n refers to in GNU Linux. In Mac and Windows, there's another symbol for new lines, but you can convert between them relatively easily. So now I this isn't I want to try to read it a different way because this isn't really the most a very effective way to read this file or the contents of this file. So what I want to do is I want to reset my file handle. I want to go back to the beginning of the file because behind the scenes, the file handle has a cursor that points to a particular position in the file. And now, because I've read the file, it's pointing at the end. I want to be able to bring it back to the beginning of the file. And so the way I would do that is with file.seek, file handle, in this case, .seek. And so seek basically says, go to this location in bytes relative to the beginning of the file. And so seek of zero says go to zero bytes offset from the beginning of the file, i.e. the beginning of the file. So I'll just do that. And so now I'm back at the beginning and I want to show you how to read the file line by line, which seems like a very natural way to do it. And that's because a file handle can be treated as an iterable object that allows you to read the contents line by line. So what I would do is I would say for line in file handle and put a colon, enter, tab, and let's just print the lines to illustrate what's actually happening here. I print line and put enter, and this is what the printout looks like, and if you recall from what the original contents looked like, it didn't have these extra lines, these extra spaces in between each of these printed lines. So 
What's going on here is that the print function is actually printing an additional new line. It's actually printing an additional one of these backslash n new line characters for each line. And it always has been, we just haven't noticed because that's actually kind of an intuitive way to print. If you print, and if you didn't do that, then all your stuff that you printed out would be sort of like stacked up on each other on one line. So we want that new line in many cases for all practical purposes, but not now. We, we, didn't, we didn't want them now because what's happening is it's printing the original new line. And so when it reads the lines of the file, it's actually including the backslash n as part of the line. So it turns out there's a Python way to remove that. So I will, let me jump back to the beginning of the, the, the thing here. And so I basically already gone back to the beginning of the file and my file handle still open. I just cleared my screen with control L. So what I would do is I would say for line in file handle colon. And what I want to do is I just want to do print line dot strip. And so strip is a string method. So each line of that file that you read in is read in as a string data type and strip is a method specifically for strings. What it does is it removes new lines. It also removes any extra spaces before at the beginning of the string or at the end of the string or tabs at the beginning or end of the string. And yeah, it removes all that stuff. So if I, if I try this and if I hit enter, we can see that the contents are exactly as the original file was. There's no extra line between them. And this is essentially how I would do this, how I would go about reading in a file. Now, how about writing a file? I want to write a file using a very similar process. I want to essentially open up a file handle to some, some external file. And if the file doesn't exist, it should be created. And so let's just say I have a list L and I just want to um, just have a list of strings. And so this is string one, string two, just uh, put something down here and string three. I'm just making it different lines, different lengths of strings, just for an example. And I want to basically print these out and print each of these strings as a line of an output file. So first things first, I have to open an output file handle and I'll just gonna call it output. And again, you can call these anything you want. You can call them the letter O, letter F, you know, whatever, just a single letter, multiple letters. I put them in all caps. You don't have to put them in all caps. Um, and I want to be able to write a file. I'm just going to call it output.txt. And I'm also going to put that I want to write the file. And so I do that with this W. And so remember, R was for read. And so now W is for write. And so I'm going to open that file handle. And I'm going to loop through these strings and print them out. So the way I would do that is I would say for string in L, but you could call it whatever you want. You can call it string, you can call it line. And by the way, earlier on when I was looping through a file handle to um, read the file handle, I called it line, but you can call it anything you want. These, all these variable names are up to you. And so I would put a colon, and now I want to print to that file handle that I've opened. And so the way I would do that is do an ordinary print statement and so now the contents that I want to print are these strings for a string in L. So now the string variable holds a string data type. And again, I didn't have to call it string, even though it's a string data type, I could have called it anything I wanted, but I want to print it. Now I want to specify the file handle. And so the way you do that is you put a comma, which is the first time we've seen a comma like this, it used in this way. We've seen commas in print statements to specify printing multiple pieces of information. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file equals output, basically specifying the file handle that I want to write to. So I'll hit enter. I have to hit enter again with get out of the ellipsis points to specify that I want to get out of that for loop. And so I'm going to quit this to show you the file and clear my screen and do an ls. And I've got a couple other files there, but, but there's this output file and there it is. And so this is the contents as expected and print added those new lines, so it's essentially gonna add new lines for us by default. So let me show you a couple more quick things. So one thing, one more thing is that I could theoretically append to that file. So I wanna be able to write to that file, but I want to append to the end of that file that I previously created, that file output.txt. 
So this is sort of like the third case of the open function. So I would define my file handle, output equals open, and I'll specify that file name again, output.txt, and I would need to specify an A, so A for append. So the three possibilities that we've seen so far are R for read, W for write, and A for append. So I'll hit enter. And if I did like something like print and did something like uh, new information here and put comma file equals output, then that didn't complain. I quit and clear my screen and look at that file output. And, and there it is, the new line is there. So basically I was able to read the file, write the file. And another third possibility that is worth pointing out here is formatted printing. And that's using the write function. So for example, if I opened a new file handle, let's just uh, say I wanna append to the end of this line and how about this, if I, if I said something like, if I said um, output.write, so this is kind of a new uh, way of, of writing, and so this uses the file handle and uses a method associated with the file handle. So this is different from the print statement. The print, print is a function, but write is a method that's specifically associated with file handles. And in, you know, in contrast, print can be used to print a standard out, it can basically use to print to the screen, or it can be used to print to a file. But write is specifically associated with file handles. And so we saw this before, um, earlier on, and write is a way of doing a formatted print. So in other words, what I could do is say, um, my name, sorry about this, um, the sky is percent %s to specify that there's a string, and pi equals percent f. And so, in other words, what I'm doing is I'm, is I'm expecting to have a string, and I'm expecting to have a floating point as indicated by the percent %s and percent %f, uh, indicating the string and float data types. And these are basically placeholders. I would need to specify a variable to match up those data types. And so the sky is, I'm going to put blue, and I'm going to put... 3.14159. Now, I also wanted to say that in the case of floats, we can specify the number of decimal points that I want to print out. Maybe I just want to print out uh, three decimals. So I'll put 0.3 before the F. And so that will say, I just want to print out three decimals of that number. So it should be 3.141 in the output. And this again should be appended to that output.txt file. So I'll hit enter, and output.write seems to return um, a variable, and I believe this is the number of characters in the printed string. So I'm going to quit and check out my output file, and lo and behold, it printed the sky is blue and pi is equal to 3.142. What it actually did is it rounded that last digit, but it was 3.141. Five, nine, and so it actually rounded up to 3.142. And that's basically file handles in a nutshell. And with that, I'll close this video and I'll see you next time.